Welcome back to Weather Nation as we continue to track Nicholas, what once was a hurricane, now still bringing some pretty significant impacts to areas along the Gulf Coast. And unfortunately, Chelsea, this is an area that was just hit hard by Ida. Yeah, and I think a lot of times people can get caught up in the, the name, the, the category one hurricane, a tropical storm. Either way, impacts are still being felt. There are still power outages, cleanup efforts are ongoing. And with that in mind, we're now joined by Stephanie Fox from the Red Cross. And Stephanie, what are some of the uh, cleanup efforts or safety tips that we should be monitoring now as we are having the second round of impacts coming in? Yeah, so as you can see behind me, we've had a substantial amount of rain so far across southeast Louisiana and really all from the Texas coast over to the New Orleans area. So we encourage folks to stay safe, to stay off the roads unless they absolutely have to travel somewhere. We also ask that they take heed of any direction from emergency officials if any evacuations do have to be ordered, that they do respect that and they do get out as quickly as possible. As for the Red Cross, we are continuing to move forward with our response efforts around Hurricane Ida. As long as road conditions are safe and as conditions out in the communities um, are we're able to actually get into communities, we will continue to do so. As things do start to deteriorate, we will put a pause on things for the safety of, of course, the community as well as our volunteer workforce. But we do ask just for folks to take the risk seriously, to not feel any kind of fatigue around so many disasters happening at the same time and to listen to emergency officials. Now, if someone is in need of response from the Red Cross, how do they contact you or the Red Cross in general to get the help that they may need? So anybody in Louisiana who may be looking for safe shelter, uh, whether it be from Hurricane Ida or folks who may be feeling a little uncomfortable and wanting to just get out to a safer location now with Tropical Storm Nicholas impacts here, um, they can actually text LA Shelter to 898-211. They can also call 211 and it'll get them that list of shelters that are going to be closest to their community. All of their needs as far as the Red Cross is concerned, we encourage folks to call 1-800-RED-CROSS. You can also visit our website or download our free emergency app. It has both weather push notifications as well as information on the Red Cross shelters that are open in communities and safety tips for folks, whether that's flood safety or storm safety, ways for you to keep your family and your home safe. Now, speaking of safety, what would you say is probably the main thing we should be keeping in mind now as this uh, moisture and all of this rain is coming through on top of some areas that are already impacted? Grounds are incredibly saturated, and here in Louisiana, we know that it doesn't take a lot of rain coming down in a very short period of time to cause some localized flooding on the roadways, some ponding. So again, I really encourage folks, if you don't have to be out on the roads, please do not be out on the roads. Please hunker down while the threat is here and until things have passed. And we too will be doing that and putting that practice into action to ensure that we're keeping as many folks safe as possible as we await for those impacts to kind of pass through the area. Again, this is Stephanie Fox from the American Red Cross. Thank you so much for talking with us today. We are going to send things over now to meteorologist Caroline Brown. And Caroline, what are we looking at now as we go through the rest of the day and with what we can expect in those impacts? Well, thankfully, we're not going to see as intense winds, but that rain's still going to be a huge concern. Look at what it was seeing earlier. This was in Galveston, Texas, where heavy rains Flooding was ongoing as well. Storm surge was certainly a concern. Galveston saw storm surge of over two feet. Now, thankfully, Galveston does have that seawall constructed after the 1900 hurricane, which certainly helps. But other spots saw really high storm surge as well. We're talking storm surge up to about four feet. That's a four foot wall of water. It wasn't just the storm surge, but it was also the heavy rainfall coming down, like in Galveston, where they got reports up to nearly 14 inches. Deer Park, Texas is where my grandparents live. 10 inches of rain. Santa Fe, 8 inches. League City, over 7.5 inches of rain. So we've seen the heavy downpours. And you can see just in the last 24 hours, Port Lavaca, they didn't see as much rain, but areas like Houston, two and a half inches. Galveston seeing a tremendous amount. And we'll watch as that rain really shifts into portions of Louisiana. We also saw some very impressive wind gusts. We saw gusts up to 81 out on the oil rigs. Houston saw wind gusts 
57 miles per hour. Some of those wind gusts that were the strongest includes in Matagorda, where they saw a 95 mile per hour wind gust. Of course, Matagorda, this was right around where we actually saw landfall of Hurricane Nicholas. Visible satellite is showing that circulation still well, but what you'll notice is we've got drier air from areas near Bryan College Station, but to areas to the east of this system, you've got that moisture being pulled in from the Gulf, and this is what's bringing with it that flooding threat for areas across Louisiana. As Nicholas works its way to the east, it's not going to be moving too fast, which means even through Thursday night, that remnant low will bring with it heavy impacts and flooding possibilities. This is a huge concern as it drifts its way to the east, and we're going to keep covering those flooding impacts. But we do want to talk about areas around Denver, Colorado, where that risk for large hail has been increasing. It has, and we've had a cold front kind of draped across this the central United States the last day or so. Yesterday, it really brought in some large hail into places of Nebraska and Iowa. Now it's a little farther south, and the I-25 corridor in Colorado is one where we'll see some of those storms fire up and across uh, Kansas and into Missouri over towards the Great Lakes. The risk's going to be there for large hail and damaging winds. Mainly a wind threat as we get up towards the Great Lakes, but then down through areas of Kansas and Colorado, mainly going to be a large hail threat where we might get hailstones one and a half inch in diameter. So ping pong ball as these storms fire up later on today. We've already had some lightning and some steady rain showers out there, but again, driven by the daytime heating, some bigger storms will fire up in Colorado and Kansas and work their way from west to east following that cold front. Now we're going to keep an eye on this, but your central forecast is coming up after the break.